is up, folks? We are here on the pod this week uh, with the one and only Alex Harling. Uh, Alex, tell folks a little bit about yourself. We know each other a little bit. We were joking before we hopped on today. Like, we emailed a lot. This is actually the first time we've, like, met each other in, like, a, a video call. So, um, yeah, I know what you do. But tell folks uh, a little bit about what you do online. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'm Alex Harling from Dynamite Jobs, and I handle account management and operations over at, at Dynamite Jobs. And what I do is I help people hire all day, hire remote workers all day. Yeah, nice. Oh, you got your elevator pitch, like, down, because I feel like I'm still working on mine, like W3 Bucks. Okay, we do website management for folks and we do white label it's like it's a little bit too long but you got yours down to like a few words which is nice so helping people hire remotely which is totally um that's how we met uh we do a lot of hiring remotely and dynamite jobs is like one of the we, we probably post to like 10 different job boards but dynamite jobs is the one where i came, i come to where i feel like one we've gotten really good results from dynamite job posting and two Every time I post a job, you always email me. You're like, hey, like, thanks for posting. Like, hey, what about this other job? We can post that. We'll just throw that one up there too. Like, I'm like, oh, Alex is awesome. Then my job is awesome. So you guys do a really good job just in making customers happy. Um, but thanks, yeah, dude. so Dynamite Jobs, where, where is that dynamitejobs.com? Yeah, we became a .com uh, this past year, actually. You know, we were .co for a while. Now we're on .com level. Um, so after... Two two and a half years, three years with the .co domain, uh, we went all in on .com. So dynamitejobs.com is where you can you can find us and you can see the latest uh, WP Buffs jobs on there. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Sweet. Um, all right. So and for my personal selfish wanting to know, what tell tell uh, me a little bit about uh, like how you came to Dynamite Jobs and kind of how you became the kind of you know account manager and the operations guy there. Great question. Um, in 2017, I was I was working for a digital marketing agency uh, during the uh, <laughs> the cryptocurrency ICO boom. Um, so I was helping with some marketing plans, mostly doing out cold outreach to different companies. Um, and the job was fine, um, but I was looking for new opportunities. And I found uh, uh, the Tropical MBA podcast, which uh, started dynamitejobs.com. Um, and so that was during 2017 when they launched the site. So I followed it, followed the site from, from since day one, and I was actually using the site to apply to jobs on there. And I didn't get any jobs <laughs> when I was applying to jobs on there. And then um, the, the owners of dynamitejobs.com wanted to hire. It was their first hire. And so um, it, it was an apprenticeship style role. It was, um, uh, yeah, gentle operations, uh, trying to figure out uh, w where to take the company and, and working directly with the founder. So uh, I applied to that. And uh, yeah, I started working with them in, in 2018. So Very this cool. is my, uh, my, my third, year, year, third year there now. Nice, nice. Okay, so did Dynamite Jobs have a Dynamite Jobs job listing on Dynamite Jobs? Or were, did you kind of like just did you do a little emailing with the founder and then you found out like, oh, they're hiring. Maybe I should talk to them more about that. They, they, I believe the way it worked was first they announced it on the podcast mm -hmm. as a way to get the most, uh, uh, the people who were following their audience first, which I think is, is smart if you have time to hire. Uh, I'll try not to get too much into hiring strategies in this, <laughs> with, with this subject matter, but um, uh, they, that's how I first heard about it. Found the job listing through the podcast episode, um, applied that way. And then after um, they listed it on the site, uh, it was fun, a while back we were looking through old listings and we found the, we were doing some SEO work on the pages and, and um, we we're looking at the listings and someone said, oh, isn't this the job that you applied to? Oh my gosh, yeah, that's the job three years ago <laughs> that I applied to. Very cool. Yeah, I've done some job uh, announcements here on the podcast too. Um, we do like a little intro for every episode now and sometimes in the intro if we have something uh you know we've done like hey we have this like little survey about around community you could you know i'll take it or and now we've also done job stuff there hey you know chrissy and i have done job episodes where we both talk about like hey we're hiring for this kind of position at our companies uh and uh if you have any interest come talk to us because i think you're right like the like a podcast is like it's like in a lot of ways your most intimate audience and so mm -hmm. you know those are the people who like Maybe they're not just reading your content or getting news. They're like, they're listening to your podcast. Like they're like seriously like in your circle. So that's a good place to, to reach out to folks. I think, I think you're right about that. 
Yeah, I see the podcast announcement, a Twitter announcement, and then an email list announcement as common ways before going to the public um, because it's kind of like a referral. People are most comfortable with referrals before a cold applicant. Yeah, totally. And now we're getting into like more of the kind of like hiring strategies or maybe recruitment strategies. This is, a lot, this is honestly why I wanted to have you on the pod today because I have a lot of questions about this stuff and I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be able to like get hear these answers and it'll help them as well. So I found as our company has grown, the WordPress space is very, um, it's, uh, it's like there's a community around it because WordPress is open source. And so the community in essence kind of builds WordPress uh, and the code, be code base behind it. And so I found a lot of our, the best people that I've found to hire like really core parts or their core members of the WordPress community because they care about open source software. They care about, you know, democratizing publishing. They care about WordPress. And so those I find a lot of you know, are my most dedicated people I can find in order to bring on to, to my team. So like I've started to do, it's kind of a combo. Like I sometimes I'll post on, you know, on job boards if you want to get a good number of candidates in, but also like as the CEO of a company, part of what I feel like my job is, is to talk to people and use my network a little bit to find people who are good fits for certain positions here. So maybe we don't have to go through the whole, like get 500 applicants and sort through them all, but I can just like find the best people and kind of plug them into what we're doing. So yeah, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Maybe how you see people doing, uh, doing hiring, I guess in both those senses, you know, both the job boards and also kind of like the recruiting aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, hiring has changed. So at least in our little remote work world, um, which is now a big yeah. remote work world, um, hiring has changed so much. And every time someone asks for hiring advice, you know, it's it, they ask for advice. I, I follow up with a lot of questions to figure out what is what's, what's the best situation because everybody hires differently. And but one thing that's pretty common to start is that um, looking to your referrals or looking to your network first, um, because. I mean, opening up your, your job, is, it's like uh, to, to the world is not like opening up your home in the way, but you're opening up your company to who, who, who knows who and you're, and you're assigning yourself up for a lot of work, um, looking at applications, talking with candidates, um, distributing the job. It's, it's a lot to do with it. So um, I, I do recommend that people start with their initial network um, when they, and that's what we most common see. I'll see someone will post a Twitter status and say, hey, I'm looking for a marketer. Who do you recommend? It, but that the issue with that is it can also lead to so many uh, referrals and without much context. Um, so yes. I always recommend if you're going to go to your your network um, with a, with whatever platform, have that job ready first. Because if if it's just a project, if you need someone to, um, uh, we're going to do random examples. Um, uh, okay, for, for WordPress, for example, um, you're having an issue with, uh, uh, you, you need a theme update and you're worried about updating your theme. And so you want to have a developer in there to check everything when they update the theme. That could be a small term project. So have that mapped out and know exactly what you want and then ask around, I need a WordPress developer who's very comfortable um, with this theme type. Um, instead of saying, I need a WordPress developer because um, that will narrow it down and you, the responses you get will be more um, uh, targeted uh, to, to you. The people will not just say I'm WordPress developer, they'll say I'm WordPress developer and all I do all day is theme updates. Yeah, I think that's really smart. I think whenever, whenever I've tried to do some recruiting kind of outside of posting a job description and it's, it's worked okay to have conversations with people who I think are good candidates, but it's missing a little bit of that. The, I'm not quite bridging the gap between like are you good in the general area that I know you're in now that I've talked to you? And are you a really good fit for this specific position? Because for every job position we post, like my big thing is wanting to have outcomes for the job description. Like what do you need to do in your first year in this position? Like that needs to be really clear in the job description to me. So it's like, yes, like right now we're hiring an operations person. It's like an operations manager, an operations assistant, um, yeah, so shout out people who are listening. If you're looking for an operations position, come and talk to me. Um, but in that position, like there's people who are generally have been in operations, but like, what do you need specifically to do at WP Bus? Okay, you need to handle, there's some like some people ops work that you need to handle. Um, like even like more specifically, like need us to create like really rigid and systemized like onboarding and like hiring documentation and like best practices we can use. And then there's like, there's more actual like 
systems implementation in terms of like the software we use at WP Buffs, um, which off the top of my head, can't think of exactly what that stuff is. Nick is our head of operations, so he knows the stuff better than I am. But and suffice to say, I want to know like exactly what people want to get, like need what outcomes they need to accomplish if they're thinking about joining this job. So that when they see that, they'll either say, "Ooh, like that's not really my skill set. Maybe I'm not the best fit for this position," which is fine. Obviously, we want people applying who are like going to be effective. And then the people who apply, they say, "Oh, like this is my bread and butter," or I at least feel confident I've done similar projects in the past that I can accomplish that outcome specifically. So I'm with you on the job on having at least like a basic job description to, together before kind of throwing it out there or else you're going to get a whole bunch of people in who are like, totally, I can help with that. Uh, probably, but you're not really sure. Great. And you have those questions ready to make sure they're a right fit. You know, if you had to jump on the phone with them right after seeing their resume, you could ask them, what's your familiarity with, with SOPs, what similar roles you've been in. You can ask them about the day-to-day -day of that job, and then you know faster that's a right fit. Um, I see a lot of people get in the trap of they start hiring, and then they realize they don't know exactly who they want. So having that ideal, uh, yes. like a customer persona, like a, a candidate persona in your mind uh, will really help. Yeah, we've never hired people that and we didn't know exactly what we wanted for the position. Of course not. I'm totally joking. Like we've definitely, definitely done that in the past and it hasn't worked out. And we've, we've, I know I've hired people on who I've made that mistake before and I kind of hired based on gut feeling and it didn't really work out. Not necessarily because I thought my gut feeling was wrong. Like they were good maybe in certain aspects of like digital marketing, for example, but they weren't very good at exactly what we needed for our position. They were more of a generalist and less of, they didn't have the exact expertise needed to do what we needed them to do here at our company. So that was, I think, where the, where the gap was. Um, but I, I'm always interested to hear, especially from someone who runs a job board, what, what are the... What do you usually see from like the most successful job postings out there? Because you see a bunch, yeah, you probably see hundreds, you know, of job postings, you know, probably thousands, maybe tens of thousands of job postings over your career there, right? So uh, what are like some, this is kind of a hard question because it's like every company is different and every remote company, especially like there's a lot of differences and a lot of things are contextual, but I'm sure you've seen some things, one, either that that work that work pretty well in terms of having in your job description in order to effectively hire someone from from Dynamite Jobs and that person is a really good long-term employee and does really well for you. So maybe some things that have worked really well and maybe you've also seen some things that like, oh, you definitely don't want to have that in the job posting. I don't know. You, you can say positive or go negative. It's kind of, I'll leave you the choice to you, but anything that pops out to you is just top of mind. I think that'd be really helpful for people. I know a lot of listeners trying to hire great people and maybe like me, they've struggled a little bit in the past. So what can they do in terms of job descriptions when they're posting to, to improve that conversion rate? Yeah, I think uh, it's, I, I always try to think of some universals, I guess, universal job rules um, when helping uh, totally. people hire. And uh, a lot of clients will ask, they'll say, I'm, I'm interested in hiring uh, a marketer. Um, what kind of job post uh, have performed the best? And I'm happy to share some that have performed the best, um, but there's different like performance metrics that we can measure. And I mean, some of them will get a lot of, I like a job, I'm trying to think out, uh, thinking out loud is what we were looking at in terms of what performs well, because some, we can get some job posts, a ton of, of, of clicks, tons of views. Um, and then um, even time on page is longer. Um, and then uh, just like you would for uh, like a normal yeah, marketing campaign. But then we always look for the, the application conversion. And then after that, the quality of the applicant. Um, uh, I, I'm trying to equate it to like marketing terms, maybe like the lifetime value of that applicant, you know, who's actually good. Sure. Um, so I think some of the universals we started is, is one is, is, is getting that uh, uh, candid persona down is um, like when you're, when you say you need to hire, like uh, you need to hire for a certain category, but who are you looking for? Uh, what, what do you want them to do day to day? Um, what are some of their uh, month long, three month projects? Where do you see them a year from now? Um, is this budgeted? Are all the stakeholders involved? When all those initial pieces are in place, like, we have a good foundation to hire. 
Um, and that's when I get, I've posted a lot of jobs where it's missing something. Maybe the, the partner uh, wasn't quite ready to hire, but the other partner said, no, no, we're going to do this. And job fell apart um, because the, the foundation wasn't set or even the day to day where you have, we had a lot of good candidates, but as the candidates came in, we realized the, the company realized they needed a different skill set. Projects mm -hmm. were changing. And that's okay because we can we can adjust when thing when, when the job is live and perhaps some of the candidates we've already received um, they they might be a good fit. So the first thing I would say is getting the foundation. After that, it's the um, the job post itself. Um, I mean, it's got to look good. We get uh, I hope I don't insult anyone when I say this, but we get a lot of job descriptions that are really uh, short and they look like project project job description, that's fine. Yeah. If you're hiring for a project, we, we do that on our site. But if you want someone to be around for the long term, um, I think you really want to um, you know, excite them. You know, this is, if they're about to spend time submitting application, um, tell them why. And I think uh, to, to give you guys a shout out, you know, WP Buffs, they have, um, uh, in a, um, you guys have an amazing um, page that shares all the uh, why you should be on the team. Not only do you, do you, do you define the job uh, and, and, and what the job is, but the uh, people can, candidates can imagine themselves working on the team. They can get excited about it. The work that you do day to day, I mean, that's like, yeah, it's exciting, but that's not everything. It's also the people you're around. It's, it's what you're representing. It's what the company is. All those little things add up to the job as a whole. Um, so, and we always we share resources when when creating job descriptions because that's what I really encourage. Um, so that's the other piece is having a well-defined job, a good job description. Um, after that would be the application itself. Um, and this is where uh, things have changed. The pre-COVID, now, now we can say the pre-COVID world, um, when there were, were more candidates than there were remote jobs, people were very hungry to give it their all in applications. And maybe you, you can tell me what you're seeing, Joe, on your end. Um, mm -hmm. But we're, we, we were seeing a little, at the end of last year, less applications. Whereas in 2019, 2018, we were seeing a ton of applications. People would bend over backwards and do whatever you wanted to, um, to apply to a job. So I'm not sure if you're seeing something like that, you know, less applications or... Yeah, I have to talk with Nick about that because I don't know. He's reviewing the applications because it's you know, for that specific operations position right now. But um, do you think that's related? Do you think that's like COVID related? Do you think that's like a some like people? It's, it's, it's interesting to see some of these uh, trends because sometimes they're the opposite of what I think they would like. I would think that there were like a significant amount of people out of work right now that people would be putting more time in. So do you think like the work? the remote work just like industry is like just grown so much over the past like 18 months that it's, or maybe not 18 months, but 12 months, the last 12 months that application that applicants are not, or people are not as like quite as like needing to find a job because maybe they already have one or something. Yeah. I think, well, die my jobs and, and uh, the other, people that are in our remote work world, uh, we work remotely, remote okay. All of us are doing really well um, because we were ranking uh, uh, for some of the top pages for different remote work categories. Yeah. And, and, and That's what I was going to ask. Then, Have you seen a lot more or a lot more job postings over the past year or so? A lot more of everything. And everything's become so oh, much wow. more saturated. So we were doing, when March, April hit, we were doing really well in terms of getting traffic. And then um, indeed, LinkedIn, Monster, it didn't take long for them to switch over, add in remote remote uh, work from home. Um, and so they were they started getting a lot more traffic as well um, for that search. Okay. And so I think what I, what I was saying about the, the application side is it was great. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't great for people with, uh, for, for, for everyone. I mean, it was a very difficult time, um, April, May, and it's still a difficult time. But for someone who was hiring, you really did have your, your, your pick of the litter. Um, there were so many applications coming through. But then midsummer, the, um, the applications, the amount of candidates looking and the amount of um, jobs, uh, they, they seem to have a, a, um, been about even because we were seeing less applications. Mm. Um, still the same amount of traffic, but less applications. There were people were becoming and so our site had a lot more longer applications with uh, video intros, cover letters, multiple uh, questions, um, and, and uh, just longer applications. But if you're a candidate who can just apply to 20 jobs and indeed with one click over and over again, um, you're going to go for that. And I, I don't blame candidates for that. Um, so that is what um, people are now competing against uh, when they're hiring is you want to make it uh, easy enough for, for candidates to apply. Um, well, I guess I go different different directions here. I mean, 
you can make your job easier to apply um, by having very few fields and people can just submit the resume, what have you, and, and apply. Um, or you can give your job extra, extra promotion, wait a longer to increase that top of funnel with the most amount of applicants, um, have a few more application questions so you get guess, like, less candidates and mm -hmm. presumably you'll have more targeted, um, interested people. Yeah, that's, so I think about conversion optimization. I think about like, how can I, get the most bang for your buck really like how can i make this specific funnel the most effective and to me that's not always just like getting the most like lead generation like i don't want to get the most leads necessarily more leads is good as long as they're high quality leads but like i want to get more high quality leads so in the job posting i might say i would actually personally please tell me if i'm wrong i want to like learn from you i might add more job field more fields more questions uh, and because I don't, I'd much rather personally have like a hundred people apply to a job who are all really pretty well qualified and all clearly like put the effort in to put a good application in than like 500 applicants who maybe a lot of them are not as high quality. So I might actually like anti-conversion optimization. Like I might like make it a little bit harder to apply and I might ask for like a loom video that goes through some answers, some questions specifically for a role that's maybe like you'd have to like hop on calls for that role. Like it'd be, I might not ask for a video for like, and like an engineer role, maybe that kind of role doesn't need to like be on video all the time. And maybe that's not specifically their skill set for someone like that. But for like a marketer who's doing webinars, like clearly you have to do video. So like, okay, shoot me a loom video with like X, Y, and Z. And for people who don't do that, maybe they're not a good fit. But for people who do do that, they went through the extra effort to say like, I want to work here enough to like, jump through a few hoops. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you, what do you think about that? Or if you've seen uh, people successfully hire based on like maybe adding more fields, making it actually a little bit more difficult to hire. I don't know. Yeah, I think that people who have more fields, um, and sometimes I'm for that. Uh, this is very, again, it's hard to have universal rules for hiring. Totally, um, totally. It, very contextual. Uh, so these are all like, these are kind of general, general things. And I'm Oftentimes when we post roles, we try different, um, test different things out to see what works well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're hiring for a specific skill set, um, uh, I guess we, we call them hard skills internally. If the hard skill is the most, uh, most important thing, um, what I do is I, I encourage the company to make it easy to apply and ask about that specific skill because that's what's most important. But if if attitude, uh, uh, the person's, um, uh, how long they'll be around, the, the, the culture fit, Yes, yes, and I, I think then we should have more fields um, and we should ask a few more things. Um, that I think that's totally cool. And that, that leads to hiring, I don't know, necessarily faster, but maybe it's a little more straightforward because you know who's the most interested. Um, whereas I think both will take, about, uh, both ways will take the same amount of time. Um, the other option that we're seeing lately is instead of having one uh, long form to start or, or part one of the, one long application to begin with, um, companies are trying out uh, two parts of the application. So just the very basic, um, a few, few few questions, just bring, just make sure the person has the, the, the main skill necessary for the job. And then an automatic email um, after replying with an automatic email um, after they, the, the initial applicant applies, mm -hmm. saying thank you for applying, you passed part one, uh, you're, you are invited to part two. Sometimes the, C, the CEO, the founder will be CC'd on there um, and it'll look, it'll look good. Um, or, or it'll be signed by them. And that gets a lot more um, conversions because again, like it was, it maybe do, mm -hmm. we do not want more conversions, but in terms of if, if the skill set is really important, the best candidates are getting picked up very fast. Um, okay, another example is actually pretty crazy. At the beginning of the summer or midsummer, there was a, 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 a few Google spreadsheets going around um, from a company called uh, layoffs.io or layoffs.fiy. Um, and they, they had the list of all these uh, of developers and people from uh, uh, really talented uh, candidates um, and from companies that, that, that were sh shutting down. For example, uh, uh, was that Quibi? Qu uh, Quibi, that video app that yeah. just failed. They had amazing people on the team, so many amazing people. Well, anyways, that spreadsheet was going around. I'm not sure how many people saw it, but I would go on and try to invite 
uh, developers to certain roles um, and, and, and try to sh share with them different opportunities, they were getting picked up so fast. I've never seen so many headhunters, so many recruiters uh, moving around. So the other part of, of, the, of the application part is whether you want it long or short is to think about that is people are getting picked up um, pretty quickly. And e even now for um, other roles, I mean, here we are almost a year later, um, or six, eight months later, what have you. Um, um, at least um, like one or two jobs a week that I work with, uh, one of the top candidates get, gets picked up somewhere else. And uh, so you can have long applications, but I guess there's also the sense of urgency, you know, keep people engaged. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going all over the place. There's so many no, it's it's good. So situational, but it's, it's interesting. Yeah, totally. You mentioned kind of the world of like headhunters and like recruiters. That's not something we've ever um, engaged in or engaged with. Not, I don't know. It's because we just didn't necessarily need it. Honestly, I just never even like really thought to do that. Have you seen that that is, you know, it's kind of a weird time with COVID because hopefully we'll be like turning the corner in 2021 and doing better this year than we did last year. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. We can't get very much worse, but that's a whole other conversation. What I want to talk about is, I mean, just the world of headhunters in general. Is that something you've seen companies uh, engage in and it be effective for them. This is maybe we can talk about this in the context of like smaller businesses too. Probably more the people you work with, more people I'm connected to. I don't know a lot, you know, CEOs of a lot of Fortune 500 companies, uh, but I do know uh, uh, a good number of people who are, uh, you know, in maybe the Fortune 50,000 or something, you know. So I know some people who are maybe running some smaller businesses, maybe doing, you know, half a million dollars a year or, you know, maybe up to like three million dollars a year, which is like, Bigger for small business, but still small in the grand scheme of things. Um, is that the kind of size business that you've seen use recruiters to really find talent? Or is that really maybe more with like, I don't know, a VC funded company as opposed to someone bootstrapped? I don't know. With our space, in our space, um, with our recruitment, because we, we, have, we offer technical recruitment um, as a service. And um, mm. yeah, they're mostly uh, VC backed um, at, the, at the minimum. I gotcha. Or the, um, there's a, a few C-suite executives, um, usually a, a CTO um, in there or, or a COO. Um, I'm trying to think of two people that we usually uh, work with. Um, they're, most, uh, they're most likely to, to want to work with us because, um, yeah, they, just, they, they want to save time. Um, and recruitment and headhunting, it's expensive and takes time. And, yeah. But um, I think a lot of people are opting towards that as a, it's, it's, uh, talent is still very competitive. I mean, there's a lot of talent on the market, um, but the, it's so easy to connect with, 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 with candidates um, via job boards, um, uh, Twitter, podcasts, LinkedIn, that that person that you might find, uh, they might be contacted on some other way. So things are yeah. very competitive still. And um, we're seeing a lot more interest in that. Um, but yes, mostly um, VC backed, you know, the larger companies, maybe they're okay. 20 to 30 employees. Um, but generally, there's an exec team and they're trying to grow out their 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 team. Um, but they're pretty involved in the recruitment process. Um, we're not mm -hmm. placing, when we do, there, there's very many types of recruitment. When we're doing it, we're not just saying, here's the best person with the skill, uh, with the, here's the best person with the skill you need, you know, put them in your company. It's, this is, this, these are the people based on your parameters. Um, and, and then the company will take it from there and, and, and speak with them some more um, okay. after we've spoken with them and, and assess them. Um, so they're still very much involved um, as they're technically early hires in a company. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to hear that most of that is done by VC backed companies. Um, you know, I'm a big, uh, like member of the indie hackers community. Um, and I am, I'm very much for, you know, revenue funded company, like run a revenue funded company. If you can, uh, bootstrap your company, if you can, I don't think there's anything wrong with raising VC funding. I, mean, I just think it's necessary in some, uh, areas or for some businesses. Um, but this would be like, Actually, what I might think of as an advantage for running a VC funded company, like as a revenue funded company, we really have to like be cognizant of like the revenue we're bringing in. And like, there's not a lot of waste, which probably is how every company should run. But if you're VC backed and you raise $30 million, like you can spend a little money, like recruiting good people. And you can actually, it's actually probably beneficial to maybe waste a little money or to like, I guess, overpay like a recruiter like you to help, help you put good people in those positions because 
like you have to grow fast as a VC back company. So like you better have like really good people who are ready to like do that. Whereas for me, it's like a little bit more relaxed, which is good for me. That's how I want to run a company, but it would also be nice to be able to like, Hey, in a month have like five awesome candidates, like perfect candidates for a high level position I'm hiring for. So, um, yeah, um, maybe I'm stuck between two thoughts there, but, um, yeah, I wanted to also just talk a little bit about, um, Dynamite Jobs Pro, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is something that I've signed up for now at Dynamite Jobs. Um, And I'll give a little backstory because I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I've hired a bunch of job sites. Most of them, you post a job, you have to format it differently for each job post. It's like totally tedious. You go through, okay, blah, blah, blah. Posted, you get an email with your invoice. Maybe you get a thank you email. And that's kind of that's kind of all your jobs there, and maybe maybe link to your website so they can apply there. But like that's that's all you get. But when I hired when I did it on Dynamite Circle, you personally reached out to me and you were like, "Hey, like how else can I help? What else can we do to like get you more candidates?" Oh, I have a pool of candidates, Joe. Like I can like I am Dynamite Jobs. I can actually actually go and talk to people and see uh, give you some of our best folks to like come potentially apply for this position. And that was like super refreshing, like way better service than most job boards I talked to or, or posted jobs did. So kudos for that. But that's a reason I signed up for Dynamite Jobs Pro, which maybe you can tell folks better about everything you get in that. But to me, it was like a no brainer, like, oh, okay, like I get to work with Alex and he gets to help me like do a better job hiring. Like, all right, let's do it. But maybe you could tell people a little bit more about what Dynamite Jobs Pro is. Yeah. No, thanks, thanks, Joe, for for mentioning that. Um, yeah, we when we first started working together, it was we were doing um a job. We still do job listings, um, but job job posts and you pay them, and we send you candidates, and hopefully it works out. But we were trying to figure out uh, for the past two years, you know, what's a more you know personal touch and also more useful. Um, it's one thing anyone can send emails and, and follow up, but we wanted to do something that was useful. And we found just following up and asking how's the job performing? We got so much feedback and we were able to, you know, adjust listings, you know, send candidates. And we're not just working with, with the clients, we're working very closely with candidates too, because we have a database of candidates. We we handle interviews for certain roles. So I, I've got lists and lists of, of, of runners up um, candidates for um, that, that we've personally spoken with. Um, and so, having uh, having WP buffs as, as the hiring pro member, um, you're able to uh, post as many jobs as you want, um, which is, is which is which is cool. Um, and uh, yeah. you can also browse the database of candidates. And so, what um, my favorite thing about the job act, about this about hiring pro is, we're able to go. You signed up, I think, two two or three weeks ago, um, and. Um, the initial email uh, was uh, was um, the initial emails between us was uh, oh these are these are the roles you're hiring for they're live on the site we're we're sending candidates to this application form um, but um, we were discussing the candidates we had in the database you know you, you got in there in the database messaging oh. people it's still very much in beta mode it's, it's uh, um, hence its affordability and, uh, and our flexibility with everything we're we're testing everything um, uh, but we were able to share candidates with each other discuss them. Um, and then when I'm discussing with, uh, um, we're, we're hiring for other WordPress developer roles right now, I'm able to share your role with those candidates and, and, and vice versa, um, and also the, the operations assistant role. Um, so it, it's kind of an ecosystem, and that's what we're trying to, to do is allow our, our hiring pro companies post as many jobs as they'd like, browse candidates, message them, but then also work with us. Because um, even, like, I mean, as you said, it's, you're not in the, in the, the it's not good for a WP of WP left right now to bring on a big recruiter or an agency to do all this hiring. Hiring is still a very much personal part of the company, and I think that's I think that's excellent. Um, but we can ha- help um, give a little extra support. Whereas your team members are are, are busy running the, the company, you you now have to, uh, dynamite jobs on your side to to help with these things. Um, and that's uh yeah that's I guess that's hiring pro in a nutshell or a few nutshells. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, cool. I I thought it was. Uh... I think it's a great idea because I, when I think about headhunting, I think about like, honestly, like a fortune 500 company or like a VC back company, like people with a lot of money to spend to do with this. But I think there are a lot of people out there, a lot of remote companies, a lot of smaller companies who need like a level of the down version of that. Maybe they don't need all the bells and whistles, but they would love like something that's like, Hey, I run WP Buffs, a productized service company. Like, Hey, something you can pay a monthly subscription to, which is good for you because someone pays you on a month, monthly basis and they can hook into someone who can maybe on a slightly lower level, like help them to do something, like to find good candidates and like fill positions 
at their companies with good people, which actually I think works for everyone. Because I, if I think about like, if I think about like the best possible candidate for every job I could have, like half those people I probably can't afford anyway. If I'm being honest, it's like again we're a revenue back company. Like we're not VC back. We don't have we, we're not paying like huge salaries to people. Like our salaries are probably average for you know our industry or whatever. So we're maybe not like so we have to be a little bit more flexible around, you know, a 10 out of 10 person for a salary way out of our range, or maybe I want like a eight or nine out of 10 person who fits our salary range. And sometimes we have to make those, uh, like that's a better fit for us anyway. And maybe a better fit for like the kind of like price range of what then my jobs pro cost as opposed to like, I don't know. But I'm, when I think about recruiter, I think about expensive. <laughs> so that my job is yeah. pretty, it was somewhat affordable for us, you know? So it was, you know, I, it, to me, it was no brainer. I was like, yes, let's do it. Good. No, it's really great to have, uh, have you as a hiring pro client. And um, I worry that I, I'm annoying with my email sometimes because I'm, I used to check in a lot. I check in a little less, but I want to make sure people are getting the, mm. the best out of it because the company's return and they keep hiring with us. Um, so I, I really encourage you and other hiring pro clients, let me know what's working, what's not working. You know, if, they, if the candidates aren't turning out well, we'll make adjustments. It's more often than not, we have who, who, who you need. Um, you just got to get their attention and, and send them your way. Yeah, totally. So is that what, uh, is that what you think your, your big focus is for the rest of 2021 or for like the foreseeable future? Are you going to keep like, is, is the pro, the pro thing, something that you just want to keep growing on and getting more people in there or like, what's the, yeah. What does the future look like for Dynamite Jobs Pro or Dynamite Jobs Joe? Oh man. That's the funny thing about, about having a company with a two-sided marketplace. Uh, we, we've got the totally. companies, we've got the candidates. So we're trying to we're trying to help help them both, and there's limited resources to grow out both sides of it. Mm. So uh, the, our team is, has expanded um, a lot this past year, um, and I'm I'm actually hiring right now. I'm going to bring another person on to help me um, into this week. They'll, they'll be brought on, and the the whole purpose of that is uh, we're trying to expand both sides. One person uh, is our is our CTO, um, and he he's building out the, the platform that you're on right now. Um, yeah. So our main site is, is based on WordPress, um, which has been amazing for our, our flexibility as as for the past three years. But the, the back, uh, so it's called the back end, the, the, called the, the database or the platform, that's being custom built um, by the CTO right now. And that's um, for, for companies and candidates right now, because candidates are in there that you, you can message them and, and, and companies are in there uh, they can message mm -hmm. candidates. But there's not much connecting the two parts. And so we, we're trying to build out more where um, you still have to submit your jobs through a form and then um, uh, we'll get them live, but you're not able to, you have to do everything through email uh, with me uh, if you're a company, um, mm. you know, just shoot me a message and say, hey, can you pause the listing or, or, or let's change this. You cannot, we don't have a dashboard uh, set up like that or a really, really good um, system set up. So I, want, I would like that to be built uh, sooner rather than mm -hmm. later. But on the candidate side, um, we're getting um, almost, uh, I would say, just around between 1,000 and 1,200 new people signing up for the platform um, on the candidate side. We have a, a, a decent audience for our, our email list and our, our social media, um, mm -hmm. but people joining the platform, giving us their information, that is growing a lot. And so we're also building out options for them. Um, so candidates can now sign up for Candidate Pro. There's Hiring Pro and then there's Candidate Pro. And with Candidate Pro, um, it um, you're, you show up on the, the top of the search results in our database when companies search for your skills. Mm -hmm. You can also list um, offers or services. Um, so if you're if you're a designer, you can you can list uh, your design services. If you're a developer, you can list your hourly rate. Um, some things on there right now is we have we have salespeople listing their rates. We have um, I was just looking through them yesterday as we were sharing them around. Uh, so social media audits, um, different kinds of uh, SEO work. Um, so that has been built out. It just needs some improvements. Um, but candidates are really liking that as they can they can share their offers. We share those with companies. Companies can find them when they search for candidates. So what's so yeah, to answer your question, what are we going to focus on this this year? Uh, I would like to build out more things for for my hiring pro clients. Um, uh, but then I also, I love helping the candidates as they use our platform more. Um, they're getting hired on there. They're starting more conversations. I mean, the emails we get from candidates who say, like, I've, I've gotten more messages, more valuable messages on here than on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot. Um, 
and that's that you know something's working. Um, so rest of the year is we're building out that platform and we may connect the, the WordPress site with our database sooner or continue to build out the database and um, the, the, keep the functions within within there. But no matter what, there's a lot happening. So if you're a follower of Dynamite Jobs, if you're a client of ours, you're going to see a lot of changes and a lot of updates, which is exciting. Um, I, nothing should, should hurt our clients or our candidates. I think everything is going to help everyone. Um, and <laughs> most of the people like that. They feel really happy to be a part of a, a beta project and to give feedback. Um, you know, it's still a little um, duct tape and, and bubble gum, but it works. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what's going on there. Yeah, cool, man. I, I, I know I could like potentially find candidates to hire on LinkedIn, but honestly, it has never once crossed my mind to do that. And I think the reason is I, like LinkedIn is not cool for me to me. I don't know if it's like that for everyone, but I'm not like got to recruit on LinkedIn. Like that doesn't sound like fun for me. Like I'd much rather go to like, and like, like, uh, a, like a indie site almost like a like a, a remote specific like honestly like run by you kind of site to like hire or remote hire and like LinkedIn does not sound like something I'd want to do for that so I think that you're in the right spot for that um, and as a pro a hiring pro candidate I and let me back up a second I think that you're going about building things out the right way because I think the most important thing is to see if people will pay for something and see if you can give good value to people, get feedback from people to keep building things out. But to launch something, this is a great example for anybody listening. You don't have to have everything fully automated and fully built out when you start. Like I have no problem, Alex, like emailing with you, like when something there's, there's a little thing in the dashboard, like I can't do, that's fine. I like literally don't care. It's, it's nice actually. Cool. I get to email with Alex. If it was automated, maybe that would be nice, but like it doesn't, I don't personally care that much if I need to email you. I think the, you took the right steps though. Like, okay, Joe paid for it, as did 50 other people. Okay, now we've got a little revenue coming in the door. Now we can pay some a developer to come and build some of this stuff out to make it better for people. But the proof of concept and the, like, is this something that can grow into something bigger? Is It's more important to answer that question than to actually build it and say, across my fingers to see if this is something people want. Because you've done probably the hard part now. No. Oh everything's hard, right? <laughs> every, every step you're like, this is the hard part, you know, but you've passed a hard part and now you can do the part where, you know, a little bit more automation, a little bit more dashboard control, um, the things people want to see. But honestly, the things your early adopters like me will be like excited to give you feedback on like, oh, that dashboard's cool. Like you should totally be sending me emails when you're working on stuff like, hey, Joe, I just like built this like thing in sketch. How does this dashboard look? Like, ah, like, oh, it looks cool. I'm glad you're making that, so. I think you're on the right track for that kind of stuff. That's great to hear. Yeah, I, I love hearing the, the feedback on that. Um, but be careful, I'll be sending you emails every, all, all the time now. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. New feature ideas, you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna expect your reply. Like, what should we do? Yeah, oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I've asked, I've asked for too much now, but yeah, you can you can hit me up. I'll, <laughs> I, like giving, I like giving feedback on that stuff. I like seeing what people are doing. Honestly, it gives me ideas. I'm not, running a job board or anything but it's funny when people come to me with like challenges whether they're like wordpress website support 24 7 specific or they're like totally like they're making chairs adirondack chairs out of their garage like there's always something i learn from those when they ask oh what is this i think about how does that affect us like there's like an operation sort of thing okay and now um, that's interesting because that kind of applies to this part of our operations here and it gets me thinking so selfishly you can email me when you want to and i'll try to give you feedback it'll help me as well it helps everybody all right cool man well we have about 45 minutes now, so we're going to start wrapping up. But this has been awesome. I learned a ton just from hearing about like some of the best practices around posting job board uh, on job boards, um, how I can use my network a little bit to, in like the correct way, like find candidates, good potential candidates for my network. Maybe I should have a job description up. I should have a real focus on my job descriptions about maybe the outcomes like I mentioned, but also what you mentioned, just like have a really good persona for what that job is. And that seems like the dip, a big differentiator between uh, places that have maybe more successful recruiting pipelines and one and ones that are still working on improving them. So let's wrap up now, but let's uh, tell folks about where 
they can one find you online and two if you've got a little discount code so people could post jobs or sign up for stuff at Dynamite Jobs. Why don't you tell folks about that too? Great, yeah. Please uh, head on over to dynamitejobs.com uh, or just search Dynamite Jobs. We, we should be the first result there. Um, and if you have questions specific to hiring, I'm happy to happy to help. Email me at, uh, at alex at dynamitejobs.com. Um, we're always, we love discussing hiring just like we are now. Um, and then for the discount code, uh, uh, if you sign up to be a hiring pro uh, member on the site, and you can find that through our, our sales page on the site, um, you get $10 off your first first month with a uh, WP Buffs code. That's capital letters, WP Buffs. Nice, nice. I just did a little, I watched the uh, social dilemma recently. So I switched off my Google search engine and turned to DuckDuckGo, but I ha have you come up first in DuckDuckGo search engine as well, if you didn't know. So yeah, That's Dynamite great. Jobs. Yeah, dynamitejobs.com uh, for folks who want to everything. Are you at, for, so it's both sides. So if you're a candidate and looking for a remote position, go check it out there and apply to some WP Buffs jobs as well. And if you're hiring as well, if you're a WordPress company, um, great place to go hire. You can post a job or you can like actually get some recruiting efforts to help you run your business and, and just grab one of Alex's subscriptions there. So totally cool. Alex, the last thing I ask our guests on the show to do is to ask our listeners for a little iTunes review. So if you wouldn't mind asking listeners right now to give us a little review on iTunes, I'd appreciate it. All right, listeners, it's time to uh, to give uh, Joe an iTunes review. You know, we know we know how helpful they are and how easy they are to to give. So let's give a little five stars. Yes, appreciate it. Uh, people can go to wpmrr.com forward slash iTunes. If you're on a Mac or an Apple device, it forwards you right there. You can leave a little review. Uh, you can just leave a star review, but we like when you leave comments. Um, tell us a little something you learned from this episode. Then we can send a screenshot over to Alex and say, thanks for the review. Here's what people learned. Uh, it also gives us a lot of good feedback into what people really liked about the show. Because if you left a review, it means like you like this episode a lot. So we'll know, oh, we'll do more episodes around hiring. We'll do more episodes around how to hire, how to be a good candidate, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how to build out your team, uh, remote team, all that stuff. So uh, leave a comment. Uh, and it also kind of gives us motivation to continue going. So the more, every time I see a review, it, I'm, I'm always like, oh, thank you so much. Like it's a personal thing. I appreciate someone who took even two minutes out to go do that. So go leave a review, wpmrr.com forward slash iTunes. If you are a new listener to the show, I don't know exactly what episode this is going to be, 120-something, I believe. But we've got 120-something-odd episodes on all sorts of topics around WordPress, about growing your business, about running a business, more around hiring and team building and that kind of stuff. So go through and use a search bar on WPMRR forward slash podcast and go find an episode you want to listen to. Uh, especially now, you don't have to go and binge that new Netflix show. Queen's Gambit, I heard, is pretty good. But other than that, you should be pretty much binging WPMRR podcast episodes. So don't hesitate to go and do that. Uh, if you have questions for us at the show, feel free to shoot us an email at yo, yo, at WPMRR.com so we can do some Q&A episodes. Uh, we do like to do those occasionally here. So shoot those in. Uh, or you can just hit me up on Twitter at Joseph H. Howard on Twitter. Alex, you didn't give a social media thing. I don't know if you would like to give a social media thing or maybe you're not on social. I don't know. I don't really have any socials. <laughs> uh, he's a smart man. He's a smart man. You can't find him on social, but you can go to dynamitejobs.com and find him. Uh, good for you. Uh, that is it for this episode. I'm trying to think if we have anything else to wrap up. I don't think we do. That's it for this week's episode. We will be in your podcast players again next Tuesday. Alex, thanks again for being on, man. It's been real. Thanks, Joe.